psychedelics into the mainstream of our culture. And what you just shared, for me, is the message of this movement. That we here can integrate in this way to create wholesale systemic change in our society in such beautiful and meaningful ways. Thank you so much for coming here and sharing that message. I've been, we've been prepping together, but that was my first time hearing it delivered, and I'm, I'm very moved in this moment. I don't know about all of you. Yeah. So Justin, you have been powering one project, which is taking on this enormous mission and task of transforming our economic systems and social systems. You've been supporting a team that's been out in the world researching all these innovative things that people are doing. You named a few up here on stage. I would love if you could share with our audience some of the most incredible or inspiring or transformational examples of what you and your team at One Project have been unearthing in this quest to discover the ways to, to live better and more holistically on this planet. Thank you. Uh, well, first of all, it's really critically important to underscore we are not taking on the task of transforming society because that's impossible. And there, it is such a large movement. I mean, that was one of the things that was most inspiring and interesting as we underwent this research was that there are millions and millions of people and indigenous cultures that have been practicing ways of economic cooperation for, for millennia and novel practices that people are pioneering all over the world. I think that in a lot of cases, the challenges and mobilizing the resources that's required in order to be able to scale and protecting themselves against the dominant systems. There's so many stories of movements of people who have started to create pockets of liberation against the existing system and then the leaders get assassinated. Like There, there is a real strong uh, reactionary force that the current system uses. Um, a few examples of things we found particularly inspiring. One is, one is commoning, which has developed this uh, terrible reputation because of an article that was written uh, called The Tragedy of the Commons that, act, that, that makes the claim that has become widely adopted, which is, oh, if you have a common resource, like a forest or, or the atmosphere, and people are just left to their own devices, people will just ruin it. And therefore, we need privatization. We need someone to be in control of every pocket of that forest in order for it to be able to survive. And that's simply not the case. It turns out that commoning has been the norm, normal way that humans manage resources for, for thousands and thousands of years, but that it, it is the thing that they're most vulnerable against is people with a profit-driven, militaristic mindset coming in and destroying things. Um, there are amazing practices of citizens' assemblies where a lot of what's broken about our current democracy is that it is uh, representative in the sense that there are elections. And elections, it turns out, in, the, in ancient Athens, they originally experimented with modern democracy being, or with good democracy being election-based. They found this funny property that the rich people always won. And then they switched over to a dis different system of, of lottery, of, of randomly selecting the people who would, be, who would be making the decisions. And the system actually works much better. Yeah. Um, just having it's, its governance actually of the people, by the people, and for the people. Uh, the founding fathers knew this and wanted to keep their interests in power, and that's why they chose elected representation. Mm -hmm. So I, I could keep going, but there's so many inspiring examples of alternate currencies, <laughs> what? certain things in, in a certain corner of the Web3 space, uses of artificial intelligence, um, and just like very inspiring revolutionary movements who have fought tremendous battles in order to maintain their autonomy and their sovereignty in the face of, of authoritarian regimes. So Justin, you have looked so intently and intensely at these enormous challenges of our time. And I think when people do that, they can often be left to feel despair, hopelessness. This idea that it's all too big to change, so why can I bother trying? You strike me as somebody who has an enormous amount of hope. Why is that? Yeah, I, I don't know if I'd say it's hope. Um, and I wouldn't say I'm an optimist or a pessimist, because I think that taking those perspectives requires believing that the future is somehow already written. Um, when in actuality, we are co-authoring the future. We are designing what happens next. The, the future is not yet written. And so it's more that I see there's an opportunity. If we got together, if, if those of us who believe in this new world that's possible were to get our act together, coordinate appropriately, 
join together in solidarity on an emotional and spiritual level, but also at a very practical and technical level in developing the cooperation and the systems and technical solutions that are required to reimagine these systems. I do believe it is possible for us to create the world that, that we long for. Um, we just have to do it. And so I'm not going to sit around and just hope that that happens. I want to play whatever small role I can play in, in helping that to come about. Yeah, thank you. There's, um, you have this really robust and interesting background in technology, and we're part of the film The Social Dilemma. Has anyone here watched that film, Social Dilemma? Yeah, great. So many hands. Well, um, technology has been uh, currently set up in ways, and you speak in The Social Dilemma very eloquently about the perverse incentives of capitalism, right? And so long as we're driven in this way, what image might we create our technological systems in now? What, what ways, you talk about, you know, that AI could really help us. I think we're experiencing a moment of a lot of fear and trepidation about these huge unknowable forces that are hard to predict. So how would you guide, if you, if you will, um, some of these enormously powerful tools that are currently, these godlike powers that we have that are currently here. Yeah, it's an enormous topic, and I think I say will be oversimplified, but first and foremost, consciously and mindfully, which may seem obvious, but is not at all the way that technology is developed today. Today, technology is funded by venture capitalists for the purpose of maximizing profit. Companies have it, are, are almost entirely structured as for-profit entities, of a legal fiduciary duty to maximize profit. And even if they're founded by mission-oriented people, the, the force of that profit incentive just tends to take over and cause things to move in a specific direction. So we need to instead be thinking very, from the beginning and at all times, what does it look like for these technologies to be designed in service of our values, in service of the things that we find sacred? And that requires changing the economic structures that govern them. So instead of them being governed by for-profit companies, we need to transition to, instead of a board of directors responsible to shareholders, they need to be responsible to the people. I mean, imagine if these giant technologies, these social networks, these artificial intelligence, weren't just private companies that were exploiting, you know, they were, they were le 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 leveraging this enormous amount of data for, the, for private benefit, but were in fact governed by the people, that they were public, they were public not in the sense of public or something by the shares, but public as in institutions that were first and foremost there to serve the people and that the people could decide what would the ethical choices were. I think the psychedelics industry could certainly take a page out of those concepts in this moment in time as well. Yes, yeah, definitely. yeah. Well, Justin, we are all out of time. Thank you all so much for joining us here today. I'm very, thank you very much for your time.